I told you it's gonna get higgledy piggledy and then Hello and welcome to a video you did not search for. My name is Keely and in today's video I want to talk a little bit about uh, me. I know it's so big headed on my channel to talk about me, but <laughs> I think in previous videos I've been dropping things that may need a bit of background content, especially after the last video that you may have watched. So, so. Yeah, so in today's video, I do want to talk about myself and I want to talk in detail about how it feels to be someone that grew up in the adoption process but within a family, which I'm sure is completely different to growing up in adoption uh, where you don't know your family at all and how that has shaped me as a person and what that makes me feel, how that affects my mental health. So let's start at the beginning. Um, a scrape of the 80s, I am born in 89. I think that's m probably quite important to mention, not important, but I think it's it's good information to have at hand because it means that I didn't grow up with that much internet and I, I'm, I think I remember getting the internet in my room when I was like 16 or 15. So yeah, I think that's important to say. But yeah, so I grew up in a family that is my own family, but isn't my immediate family if that makes sense. So I was born and then at birth, uh, the social services said to my parents, again, I'm acting like you've seen those videos. So uh, again, to put in content, I feel like, cause I just filmed a video where I've just put this in content. I'm like, I'm just saying it again, but it's not, it's a previous video. So yeah, so for your, for your benefit and for you to follow the story because the story gets higgledy piggledy, my birth mother has schizophrenia, my birth father has schizophrenia, therefore when they created me, I was not allowed to be with them because their schizophrenia was so severe that basically they, they've been sectioned loads of times, I'm pretty sure they met in a place where they were in a, like a, a home for people with schizophrenia, something along those lines. But yeah, so they did something they weren't supposed to do, they created me, they didn't abort me, thank you very much, and uh, yeah, so I was born and at birth I was pretty much taken away um, from fears that my mother or father was, um, could possibly harm me to the point of death. So I was put into foster care for around six weeks. And then after um, that, I think in that time, my grandfather was trying very hard to, and my step-grandmother, because uh, he remarried, who I call mum, so yeah, that's my mum and dad. They were fighting very hard to get me into their care, so they did. They already had a child who was around 13 at the time, so I was the second child. Yeah, so I was adopted into family. I've got to say, I had no idea that that wasn't my parent, that that wasn't my parent, that though they weren't my parents. I grew up calling them mum and dad. I was none the wiser, although I can't really remember before seven years old in terms of visits, but my um, biological parents did come to visit me uh, twice a year, so at, at birthday and Christmas they came with a social worker and they visited me for about an hour to two hours um, each time, so that's twice a year of contact with these people that I guess as a child I didn't really know what was going on and if I can find photos I'll just see if I can put a photo up here if I can find one, but I just look very confused, um, it's not like I'm smiling with my parents, uh, this, if I find the photo, if I don't then you don't know what I'm talking about but I'm just sitting there like just a child just yeah, with two adults I don't know um so yeah so uh they visited twice a year um and uh need to put this into context as well so they also had another child because you couldn't keep the first one but you know have another one um so they had another child that is my biological brother I did not grow up with him because my parents that I grew up with my grandparents also were pregnant at the same time yeah uh, so they are five months apart so because they were due for another baby they couldn't really take my brother because it would just be too much for them so yeah they, they couldn't take him in so he went to an adoptive family out of our family so he grew up completely different and we are completely different people he calls me posh I'm not posh I'm, I'm just born in West London I have a different accent to him he's still in London he's just east but the difference in our personality is definitely there so they had another child so I thought it was my mum my dad my sister who's my step, the half aunt, because she's my mum's half sister. So I told you it's gonna get higgledy piggledy. I'm gonna try and make this as least confusing as it could possibly be. I don't think it will be. Um, so, let's see, let's get this into shot. So, there is my granddad and my step grandmother, who I call dad and mum, because that's what I was brought up to say. And I had, I was none the wiser until around the age of seven. My granddad was married to a lady beforehand who is my biological grandmother. 
she had my mum and all her sisters my mum and my dad biological had me and my biological brother and apparently my dad then had a son before that that i don't even know so if you're watching this and you know the situation and you know that i exist you know reach out it's fine so <laughs> then i went to live with um my grandparents parents with their older daughter who later uh, two years after me had a son at the same time my parents my biological parents also had a son my son could not come to this family because it would be too much kids of a certain age for them to handle and stuff so he went and he lived with uh sorry bro another family um so he was off the map however okay so we're caught up so i'm seven years bliss not knowing on the wiser and then i don't know what happened but at the around the age of seven i remember being told that they're not my real parents or your parents are crazy or something along those lines and i was like what so obviously then you kind of get that adoption but i don't think it was ever a secret i just think i just don't remember before that age being told that i was adopt adopted let's do some more so then so twice a year this is so hard twice a year my biological mum and dad used to come visit on birthdays and christmases and then i don't know when it started but also my biological brother used to come and this is a opened bracket i don't like that uh, my biological brother also started to visit either once a year or twice a year i can't remember but it was definitely around christmas because he's born near christmas so getting to know him as well but not really getting to know him because obviously as a child you see these people and then you don't see them for a long time and then you see them again and you're like oh yeah you exist but yeah so there's that part of adoption now starting when the visits happened as a child being aware that these people that i thought were my mum and dad are not actually my biological mum and dad but they are still my mum and dad because they're raising me very confusing i don't know everyone has their opinions on that having these people that i'm frowning a lot I'm like, mm. having these people that actually gave birth to me and made me not that my biological dad gave birth to me what am i talking about because a woman feels all the pain yeah so uh the ones that created me also came visit so when they were all in the same room now i'm like eight years old or something i'm like I don't know who to call mum or dad if I need something because I don't want to offend one people and then I don't want to offend the others and who do I call so I'm just like hey may I have some water hey nice to meet you so yeah I, I was very confused as a child now this is all like it's a lot for a child to handle but teenage years is when it really starts to manifest because you start thinking other things when you're a teenager you also start to have access to the internet see i told you it'd be important so you can do research so now knowing that you're adopted and the reason you're adopted is because your parents have schizophrenia you're going what does that mean i'm going to research that so you research it and then you fall down rabbit holes because you know the internet and then you see that if one parent has schizophrenia then you are have a 50% chance of getting schizophrenia as well. That's not a five, what is that? But um, a 50% chance of developing schizophrenia. And then your brain, your teenage brain goes, well, I've got one parent plus one parent, which equals 100%, because that's what you start to think. And you're like, oh my God, there's something wrong with me. Not only that, because you are aware that you are not the real child of the people that you are living with, you then start to think, Am I being treated the same? And I am gonna bring it out, it's a Caribbean household. There was smacking, there was the belt, there was a slipper. And I honestly thought I got more than the other ones. But then again, I also lashed out a lot because I didn't feel like I was being treated equal. That's just my look back on it. So yeah, I always thought I was treated a little bit differently. And then I start to question things lots of questions and feeling like this brings on a little thing called depression now depression such a fun thing isn't it um if you ever had depression if you suffer from depression you know that it's not a great thing having it as a teenager and not knowing what it is because back then our society did not openly talk as much as they do about mental health and mental health illnesses and just ways of looking after yourself to talk to each other whatever and the fact that it's okay not to be okay and they don't do that so the 
process that goes in my mind is I'm not okay, there's something wrong with me, I need help but I don't know how to get it. And then there's the thing of, well actually, if my parents weren't physically allowed to keep children and they were not planning to have children, then you go, I'm one of these, I'm a happy accident or in this case, an accident that wasn't allowed to be kept. When you think that and you have depression, you also think this. You think this a lot. And as a teenager, you, you're not really thinking, your brain's still developing, you're not really sure how to do this. So you do things like self-harm, do things like just not looking after yourself really. I know the age of between 16 and 18 was very rocky for me, especially when I turned 17. I went to live with my biological parent for a couple of weeks, which if you saw the last video, was that a wise idea? No, it was fine. Um, there was no no violence or anything like that. It was just a bit, a bit strange to live with someone that you know gave birth to you, but you don't really know. Plus going at college, being at college at the same time, which was very far away from where this person, from where my mother lived, and also working quite far away from where my mother lived. It was just a, a whole thing. And then I ran away for a couple of times, but yeah. So lots of things like that happened, right? And yeah, it just doesn't, doesn't go away. So now, when I get really sad and I get a cloud of depression, naturally this is always in the back of my mind. And although I seem happy and I am happy, I'm not saying I'm not happy, I am happy. But sometimes when I get too in my head, this comes up. Now, luckily, I am aware of what this is. I am aware of my mental health problems. I'm aware of what depression is. I'm having therapy, so I'm able to deal with this. Some people can't. Some people don't know that. Some people basically are just like, no, I need to act on what my brain is telling me. I'm very lucky that I'm in the position that now I'm like, no, I'm not gonna act on it. I know if I do want to, I can bring things like Samaritan or um, I guess it, now that I'm in therapy, I can bring my therapist or whatever it is. Um, and then I have uh, my lovely partner, David, that is always there on hand to kind of soften the blow whenever I feel those kind of things. So yeah, oh, it's got heavy really quickly, it got really dark. So I, I feel those things quite a lot um, when I feel sad. Um, in 2010, um, it was uh, one of the hardest years I've ever had to deal with. And uh, as this channel grows, I'm definitely going to tell you guys more story times. I'm not going to get too into 2010, but it was a very hard year. It was the first year that I actually attempted with um, no no interruption. So there has been other times where I've tried to take my life where I've stopped just before I was going to do it. And um, I've been very lucky this time I actually tried and uh, ended up in hospital. And it's, it's the events that followed that stopped me from doing it again. If that makes sense I'll talk about that in another video but yeah so I know I'm capable of doing it especially in that point in my lives and this is pro, uh, post having children so it's not like I didn't have anything to live for yeah I still have that connotation in my head um, to do that so yeah adoption this is where we started yeah I started this video about adoption and I rambled in into uh, <laughs> depression I don't know if this is the case for everyone that's adopted I don't know if it's because um, I'm adopted and the circumstances were within mental health and then my living circumstances in the way that I was basically, I don't want to say treated because I feel like it was half half, like there, there was really good times and then there was times where I was like meh. So yeah, I don't know if, if it's the same for everyone that's been uh, in adoption or I don't know if it's the unique circumstances, but yeah, I think uh, there was lots of ingredients poured into this pot and a bit of chemical X. Powerpuff Girls reference there, that uh, made my chemicals a little bit imbalanced, so yeah. But that's my adoption story. I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what you're gonna get out of this. I just, I guess it's getting to know me better, getting to know some things, uh, getting to know me with some of the stories I may tell in the future and the context of that. And also if you're adopted, just chat about it down below because it's nice for us to, to talk to each other if you've ever gone through the depression and how you deal with that, it's good to talk. That's the main thing. And I think um, right now, because we are in the middle of, well, a pandemic globally, a lot of places are in lockdown. A lot of people feel isolated. A lot of people have to self-isolate because of their, their health, their physical health, as well as their mental health. It's good to talk to each other. And I think that's very important. 
that's it guys i don't have any more to say on this story because otherwise this video will be too long guys <laughs> i want you to love and be loved i want you to remember to wash your hands social distance wear a mask and look after each other guys take care to take care of it takes care of yourself i'm up onto where the light is and i'm like no you can't climb up there pepsi stop trying to get up there it's not happening it's not happening oh the lips are oh, black on my eyes oh no oh no oh no You're not going up there i'm gonna take the camera off um yeah anyway so uh <laughs> it's just so cute and so distracting you're just so cute, ain't you? Are you cute? No, where are you going? Where are you going? You're just so cute. Where are you going? Where are you going? Um, I want you to... Where are you getting this cat? Look, look at her, please. What are you doing? Pepsi? Pepsi. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, I need to get this back in. Oh. No, she can stay. You sure? Yeah, cats and videos are cute. I don't know where she's going. You can't go up there. No, no, no. What are you doing? What are you doing, Bobby? Okay, fine, thank you. Sorry. Love you, bye. That's okay. Say hi, Pepsi. Hi, Pepsi. She doesn't want to be up here. She, she, never, she, she doesn't like to be on camera. <laughs> she's camera shy. Thank you. What are you doing? Oh, so silly. Oh, it's a good heart. See? I'm gonna rub it off now. <laughs> Your YouTube channel is cancelled.